Hannah the Suburban Witch here and today we're talking candle magic. I'm going to take you through some of the different types of candles, some of the different colour meanings behind the candles, what you need to do with your candle when you're starting to work with it um, and sort of how it all works in a general sense as well. So let's go through the different candle shapes and sizes and that sort of thing. You can get them in a long glass jar like this. Sometimes these are called Novena candles. Sometimes they're called Fixing candles, Seven Day candles, Nine Day candles, Votive candles. Okay, so these are a few of the names for that one. This is a standard candle that I just bought from a home decor store. Okay, that's everyday sort of candle, right? This one has been crafted specifically by a witch, a spiritual practitioner with an intent in mind, okay? They have selected all of their colors, their herbs, their resins, everything that's in this has been made with a specific intent in mind. They've done the work for me. This one, sometimes called a pillar candle, all right? You can see I've used that quite a bit. Tea light candles. Birthday candle. Spell candles. All right, so spell candles um, are specifically for spells. They are quick to use. Um, the quickest one, of course, is going to be a birthday candle, right? You can see that in the size. The longest burning one is going to be one of these. They go for seven to nine days, depending on the size and where you get it from. All right, so that's just some of the different shapes. And now I'll go into what you can do when you're working with them. So I want to talk about colour in candles. Okay. Now, there are specific colours that people will uh, say you need to use if you're doing specific spells. For example, green for prosperity, right? That's one that people often use, which would you might go with a green spell candle like this. However, depending on your own beliefs, your cultural um, upbringing, that sort of thing, um, for example, um, if you have Chinese heritage, you may go with a red. Now, red in traditional witchcraft, whatever that may mean, is um, often symbol of you know, sex and power and lust and that sort of thing. But in Chinese culture, that is prosperity and good luck and good fortune, right? So it all comes down to you, um, what your belief systems are, um, what feels right to you. Stick with your intuition as well. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really... I'm probably going to get blasted for this, but it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things. Remember, it's your beliefs and it's your intent that you put into the spell that you're trying to achieve, okay? Um, I don't recommend just picking a candle colour willy-nilly. That almost goes against the purpose of it. Um, you want to be thoughtful about what you choose and why you choose it. As long as you're clear on that, that's fine. You don't need to explain yourself, all right? There are traditional means that people go with, um, which is a really great way to start out, um, like for example, I like to use blue for healing. Um, you can use pink for friendship and love and self-love. Um, you might use, you know, the chakra meanings behind each of them as well. So that could be, um, you know, blue for communication, um, trust, honesty. Um, you might want to win a court case that I would suggest blue for that. Um, black if you're wanting to work with spirits or your mediumship or necromancy or anything like that as well. So there's a few different um, you know, belief systems behind the colour. So that's not really what this video is about, um, but I just thought I would touch base on that for you guys as well. Now we're going to look at some of the um, ways that you would prepare a candle, right? And the differences, right? Now these ones that you just buy from any home decor store or things like that, I personally don't use these for spell work. I use them for a nice pretty smell around my home. And the reason being that there isn't the, um, the work or the um, intent behind it when it's created um, that gives the, the spell what I want, if that makes sense. So I don't use it for spell work. Um, I will use these ones though, however, if I am doing something like fire scrying and just need a candle flame, um, I don't specifically choose certain candles, although you can. Um, but yes, I think these are more pretty candles, if that makes sense. Now, what about this one? Now, I believe this one was probably a very mass-produced candle, right? It doesn't have a great energy to start off with. I'm pretty sure I bought it from a $2 shop, all right? Um, it was bought originally as a Christmas decoration because you can't really tell, but it did originally have like a white shimmering glitter on it. It was very pretty. 
now, however, it has been in my home for quite a while. Um, it's been with me for quite a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got um, my energy imprinted into it. Um, I have cleansed it, right? So I've sort of brought that energy back into me. I, again, I don't usually use this one for spells, but I do place it by my door when we have you know, a party or lots of guests coming over just because I like the idea of the candle, the white candle, white is cleansing, right? White light, that sort of thing. Uh, when people walk in, that it's almost like cleansing them as they come in, so they're not bringing any energetic gunk into my home. Uh, but that's just one way that I like to use it. It's not a spell per se, but it is just one of the uses of candles for magic. Tea light candles. We've all got tea light candles, right? Everyone's got tea light candles somewhere. These guys are great. I usually buy a massive stack of them from Ikea. Um, it's really cheap and they're great to have on hand if you have you know, electricity blackouts quite often. Now with these ones, again, um, you can use them in spell work if you wish, if you need something that burns really quickly. Um, so if you want you know, something to take action quite fast, you might use the action of a candle that goes fast to bring that in. Again, depends on your intent, your, you know, what you're trying to achieve with your spells. I like to use these guys around the bath when I'm doing any form of rituals or new moon baths or a full moon bath, um, more for ambience as well, um, and also just to reduce the amount of actual electricity that I'm using and the EMFs that come with that um, and just go with you know, what we used to have in the olden days, which was candles and flames. So I really like that. Again, with the idea of a short, quick burning candle, Birthday candles are great for that too. And these are a really great budget alternative. If you don't have anything else to use, use what you can, okay? Don't go out and spend all this money on fancy candles. It's not necessary. You are the witch. You are the one with the power. You get to choose, you know, what you use and how to use it. The power comes from within. These are merely tools, okay? Merely tools that you weld to your power, all right? Um, so birthday candles, quick, easy, and really great for fast spells as well. Now these three. So we have our fixing candles, um, our standard witch made candles, and our spell candles. Now they all serve a different purpose. These are the ones that I would use for my actual candle magic. Now this one that we can see here, this is one um, for invoking Papa Legba. Um, it can be just the energy or actually invoking him depending on your purpose. Um, and where I buy this, they actually come with lots of different forms of candles. Um, my favorite one is the one that you see here. It's empty now, I use it to hold my other candles, called Between the Veil. You might have heard me speak of this in other videos. I light Between the Veil whenever I'm doing a reading, whether that's in person or distance, um, because that was the candle that I used to burn every night when I meditated and when I was going through my spiritual awakening. So when I burn it now, that smell, remember smell is the quickest way to access your memory. You know, you smell an old perfume and boom, you're back there. So smell is a very good way. It's almost a ritual in itself to bring you back into a meditative state. If that's what you put on when you're meditating, reminds your body, boom, go back into that open receiving state of mind. It's very, very powerful. And that's why I use that because I'm harnessing the scent of the candle itself, um, as well as the intent that was put into that candle when it was made. Um, same with this, if I'm wanting to do any work with you know, crossroads or um, communication, that sort of thing. That's what the Papa Lekba one is for, for me. Now, um, when we go through these two candles, so spell candles um, and seven day ones, okay? This one is going to be a much shorter spell. You can do this, um, you know, it's only going to burn for a little while, a couple hours, if that. Um, what we can see with these particular ones, these are hand dipped. So the end of them is not flat. So what you would do, you'd get a plate or a saucer, burn the end of it so that some wax strips onto the plate, stick it on, and boom, you've got your candle. Now, when you buy your candle, always cleanse them first. Cleanse them of any energetic attachments that they have. Um, so if it's a juniper, a rosemary smoke, um, maybe you pop it on a selenite disc. Um, you can do any way that you like to cleanse your items. Um, so once that is on the plate, right, sticking up there, you might have rubbed an oil onto it and some herbs that you wanted to add in. Research all the herbs and the properties um, and make sure that they all fit in with your intent. Um, if you're wanting to you know, speed something up, you might add some chili. Um, if you wanted to slow something down, you might use lavender, all right? If you use the opposite of those, it doesn't really make sense. It might be a bit of confusion in your spell work. 
So I pop it on the plate, you've got um, your herbs and your oils on it. Your oil can be as simple as a coconut oil and it can be as extravagant as a ritual oil, which I will show you in a minute. Um, so I pop that on the plate. I like to put a circle of either black salt or white salt around it as well. Um, and you know anything else that I'm using, whether that's sigils, um, a person's name or a photograph beneath the plate, beneath the candle, it all comes down to you and what you're trying to achieve, but that's some ways that you can use it. And the general idea is as this candle burns down, that intent that you've dressed it with is releasing out into the universe to happen. Okay, that's where the magic is. Now, my favorite. So this is my favorite way to use um, candle magic, all right, with a fixing candle. Obviously, I have used this one. I don't actually have a full one to um, show you guys an example, but you can imagine wax goes up to here. That's pretty much all that you're gonna see. Now, this specific one is Crown of Success. Now, if you make your own candles, you can do that. Just get a very long, tall glass jar, all right? Um, make sure you're doing it with your intent and choose your colors wisely. Again, this one is orange. This is for success, all right? And we can see on the front there is money. So this talks about um, bringing money in or success in money endeavors or business, that sort of thing. Um, success in your projects. And we can see a crown as well. So crown of success. Um, crowning glory, being lifted up above others, that sort of vibe, right? Um, now with this one, I bought this from Alfheim. I buy a lot of my stuff from there. I just really vibe with their stuff. He is very, very skilled at what he does. Highly, highly recommend. So with this and the way I prepare it, and the way I've been taught, but um, again, everyone does this differently. I'm not saying this is the only way or the right way. This is just my way. What I will do is before burning the candle, I make up a ritual oil. Now you can buy ritual oils, a lot of witchy shops do sell them where they're already made with a specific as purpose. You might be able to buy a crown of success oil, or you can make one. I decided to make one. I'm pretty sure I used sunflower oil as the base, um, and then I have filled it with all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to give my actual recipe here, um, but a couple of the items in there, orange, orange peel, um, there is bay leaves, there is, what else have I got in there, cinnamon, vetiver oil, a few of the ingredients there, just so you can um, get the gist. And what I do is I prepare this on a specific night, depending on the day of the week. I think for my crown of success, I used a Thursday. I did it on a Thursday, which is ruled by Jupiter. And that's for good fortune and success and good luck, right? So that goes with the vibe. So that's the day, the planet that rules that day. So I made it on that day made it a week in advance, and then I did my actual magic on the Thursday as well. And I also looked to the moon to see what the moon was doing um, when I was, you know, putting this out there. I'm wanting to build on this energy, so I want to do it in a waxing moon phase rather than a waning moon phase, okay? Lots of things you can think about there to aid in your magic and your intent. Now, um, what I do this with, I, I just put it all in there, and then afterwards, and I'm, this isn't really about the ritual oil making, but I'm putting my intent into that and I'm putting it on my altar to charge it, um, surrounded by things like citrine and that sort of thing to aid in that particular intent. When it comes time to do my actual candle magic, um, at the top here, I poked um, holes through the candle as just as far as they would go down. Once you get resistance, that's far enough to pull it out. Depending on what you're doing, um, you might want, I think I did, I think I was going with threes for my uh, crown of success. If I was doing prosperity, it might be sevens. Um, depending on your spell, it's going to depend on the number that you use. So for example, if it's threes, three bay leaves in here, right? Three holes in here. So I just sort of replicate that over and over. It's adding to that energy and building that energy up. So holes in through there, get my ritual oil, pour it in just a, like a little bit. It's really easy and I've done it so many times to put too much oil in and then the candle doesn't want to burn and you're going to pour it out and it's a bit a bit funky. Um, so just a little bit so that it fills those holes. All right, so that intent in your ritual oil is dressing that candle's going all the way down through. You can also rub it on the outside if you wish. Um, if you don't have labels on it or if you've made it yourself, you can write your intent on the outside. You can draw sigils, you can do whatever you wish, all right? Um, and I didn't mention before, sorry, when you're using your spell candles, you can carve words and sigils into these as well. Totally fine. Same idea. So then what we do, what I do, is I will sit with my candle, think on my intent, 
So just say crown of success, crown of success, I want to be successful in business or whatever it is that I'm trying to achieve. Imagine that intent coming out through the palm of my hand, okay? I use my right hand because that is my giving hand, my masculine side of the body, and I'm pushing, that's your you know, doing hand, whereas this one is the receiving hand. So I want to imagine that intent coming through my body, through my whole being, out into a single thread. And I pull that thread out, that thread of intent, and I would wrap it around. So this I'd say three times, one, two, three. And then, forming almost like a triangle, draw that all the way down to the bottom and do it again. So I'd do it three times and put that intent all the way down to the bottom, then it's ready. Now when I burned this one, I put it inside a crystal grid, again with crystals and the shape and the, the sacred geometry, all adding to my purpose to get it out there, right? Um, and then what you do is you just let it burn. Now. You don't have to let it burn for the full seven days if you're worried about going to sleep with a candle that's open, you know, a, a flame in the home, or if you've got to go to work, clean the house, all of that. I do worry about those things, so what I would do is snuff the candle like this, put something on top, remove the oxygen, don't blow it out. Don't blow it out. That's blowing away your intentions. So just snuff it out, almost like a pause, and then light it again when you get home, when you feel safe. All right? The key, and this is the key with any magic, intent, manifesting, whatever you're doing, let it burn down, forget about it. Forget it happened, it's out of your mind. Leave that up to the universe. It's gonna happen, whether you like it or not, it'll happen for your highest good, or it might not happen, or it happens in a different way. You've done your bit, let it go. All right, that's my only advice there with that one. So that's a little bit on candle magic and how I use it. Um, I'm going to be doing a video today as well, which I will link to this one on an actual example of me using one of these spell candles um, for healing, just so you can sort of see how I do that and the process I put into it. But I really hope this has helped you. Give it a go. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your success stories. How did it all work out? I've had marvellous success in doing spells for myself. Um, I think they're fantastic and it's a really great way to focus your manifesting energy. Um, and I really hope that this helps you too. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe um, and I will chat to you next time. Bye.